All right, today on the table, I have the DT-10, otherwise known as the Echo 308. Uh, this firearm's just over eight pounds. Inside, you're gonna get an M16 style bolt carrier. The bolt carrier is chrome lined. Same with the pin. Uh, your gas key is staked on. Got a 16 inch barrel, 110 twist. Uh, this is a phosphate barrel, this is not chrome lined. Gas block is pinned on. You get a sling swivel in the back, in the front. Uh, it does have a forward assist and it's in the same exact spot as an AR-15, so transitioning from an AR-15 to this, you're right at home. Same with the safety, the only difference is the receiver's slightly longer and slightly fatter. And this is going to make a whole lot more noise and have a lot more power. Six position classable rear stock. It also comes with a Magpul mag. Birdcade flash hider. You do not get a rear sight. So you are going to have to pick one up if you want to get like a 308 ranging reticle. I believe you can get those for like just under 200 bucks. And then with the even open sights, you should be combat effective to 300 yards without a problem. Would I purchase this? The short answer, yes, without a doubt. I mean, the only competitive option at this price range is really the DPMS, but then you got to mill the receiver instead of forge like this one, so everything's fatter. It looks uglier, it's harder to hit the mag release, your forward assist is moved into a different location so it's not like transitioning from an AR-15 to this would be, it's just easier in this one. Now I'm not a big fan of this handguard because of how fat it is, but Armor Light makes a really nice replacement for this where it's tapered in. Super cheap too, it's like 80 bucks. But a free floated handguard is basically a must on a 308 because of how wide the bore diameter is to the barrel thickness, these ones really whip. So if you don't have a free floated handguard, if you hold here, 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 or here, it's gonna shoot different every single time. Basically, you'll be changing the harmonics of the barrel if you hold anywhere except for on the back receiver. And then if you were to like go up against the rest or something, it would also change your point of impact. And there's more than just the look of why I'd replace this handguard. This handguard is insanely noisy. It's like a musical instrument or a dinner bell or something. Just brushing against it, it makes this nasty ring. The sling swivel, that makes a bunch of ring. If something were to whack it like a stick or something. And there's no sound at all in nature that sounds like this. So if you were like walking through the woods or North Korea or something and Oh, there's someone over there. Yep, right over there. I'm sure of it. No doubt about it. Now, the barrel's not chrome lined, so that is a weak point. But Wyndham, weapon, Wyndham, Wyndham Weaponry sells a very high quality chrome lined barrel 4150 steel chrome molly Varget steel that is chrome lined for just under 300 bucks. So, if this barrel doesn't prove to be as accurate as you want, you could swap that out for about 300 bucks. <clears throat> Now, I typically see these on the internet for about 750 so if you just threw on a rear sight, you'd be into this for like 800 bucks, 850 You'd have a fully functional 308 battle rifle. Now, if you changed out the rest of the stuff like I would do, which would be the ranging rear reticle, your front handguard, and the barrel, and then I'd put on a muzzle brake, because otherwise these rifles just aren't fun to shoot for me. You'd have 20 in the muzzle brake, you'd have 80 in the handguard, 150 in the rear sight and 300 in the barrel, you'd be into this rifle for like $1,100 and it'd be very quality, very high end. Now, if you don't plan on changing the barrel, when Delton was really moving their AR-15 rifles for super cheap and just pumping them out, I was starting to see some huge blends in the finish on the barrel. Be sure to check the outside of the barrel The chamber and the bore, their finish was actually coming off and they just had raw steel inside the chamber. Other than that, we've moved quite a few through the shop. They all seem to be pretty consistent on quality. I wouldn't call it high end quality, but good enough to where it'd be okay. But leave in the comments below if you own one of these, how accurate it is, how the rifles treated you, if you recommend other people purchasing this rifle. Don't forget to subscribe.